Okay, let's start off. We've got two topics today. Um, let's start off with um, a look at the, mm, the political ground, the political scene in Ondo State. Uh, the election is an off-season election. It'll be coming up, um, as you're already uh, well aware, that'll be coming up in November. But um, uh, the primaries uh, are scheduled for later this month. The two leading parties in the place, APC and PDP, um, you know, APC would appear to be, you know, going, not, not would appear, I think has definitely said that they'll be going with a direct primaries for the process, and it is thought that um, PDP will be going for indirect primaries. Now, what is the lie of the ground? Everybody, the govern, the uh, incumbent uh, governor, uh, Ayi Datiwa, who is serving the rest of the term of uh, uh, Arakuni Akiridulu of blessed memory. Um, he is also in the race. He has said that there's no uh, vacancy, but there are other players that are sort of uh, chopping at the bit, uh, so to speak. Uh, let's look at that uh, with a person who is knowledgeable about the politics uh, in Ondo State, Femi Odere. Uh, Mr. Odere is a public affairs analyst. He's a senior legislative aide to the Senate president on stakeholders, engagement, and mobilization. A fine morning to you, Femi Odere. Good morning, Yori. Good to see you again. Indeed. So, not everybody knows that you're actually an Ondo man. That we will just quickly get that out of the way. Okay, now they uh, know. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you're based in Ibadan. think that I'm wrong. You're based in Ibadan. Have yeah. been a long while. Yeah. You served in the government of um, AKT under Fayemi. Uh, Fayemi. Yeah. And um, you are also quite active, shall we say, uh, on the goings on uh, in you know, those states. So I think between Oyo State and uh, uh, and uh, Ekiti State, Ekiti State and, and State. Ondo State, yeah. uh, let it now be known that you are an Ondo man. Well, let me let me let me actually put it this way to you, Yuri. I I don't feel any encumbrance when it comes to my state of origin. Yeah. As long as it is the Southwest, mm -hmm. I feel pretty much at home anywhere in the Southwest. Yeah. You know, I can I can I can blend because we speak Yoruba. Yeah. And uh, I've always been telling people that I can work in the government of in any government in the in, southwest, in the south. and I'm, I, I don't have any encumbrance. That I just happen to be born in Akure, <laughs> uh, in uh, present Ondo State. <laughs> so, and with the way the constitution is arranged, so it is where you were born that you will you will claim, yes. and it is where you are born that you can claim to have rights and privileges and all of that. So even after starting. Uh, uh, my political journey, so to speak, in a kitty state, I still people are still telling me that look, if you want to get any any, any far in uh, in politics, it is better to start looking at your home base. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, as you said, it's one Nigeria really yeah, at yeah. the end of the day. Uh, you have put the limitation on it of in the southwest, but um, still there are people who originally were. Of Southern origins that are working as far as up north. Yeah, uh, right. Yeah. You know, it's, it's I, I'm, I was just trying to be modest. Yeah, that, yeah, you know, yeah. As a as a former diaspora focal point officer under the government of uh, His Excellency uh, Governor Kyle Defy, me, I can work in any state government across the country. The only thing might be maybe ba language barrier. Mm -hmm. You know, like mm -hmm. if I if mm -hmm. I go to Gombe State, mm -hmm. for instance, I don't speak Hausa or Shogoto. But as as long as English is uh, the official communicating uh, mm -hmm. uh, communication uh, uh, thing, then I'm I'm good to go. Okay. Yeah. Now today um, you are uh, the senior legislative aide to the Senate President yeah. on stakeholders engagement and mobilization. Mm -hmm. That doesn't necessarily factor into any sectional interest, does it? It's, no. It's about. Um, uh, as the engagement and mobilization, yeah. stakeholders engagement. Well, if you want me to uh, to to explain that, I can do that uh, briefly so that we don't take too much out of the time because we want to talk about on the politics, which is the reason why I'm here. But when you when you when you're speaking about stakeholders engagement, uh, there are two basic stakeholders in the Nigerian project: uh, the governmental stakeholders and the non-governmental stakeholder. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, I come to this position with a, with, a, with a holistic view 
that when it comes to the activities of the Senate President, His Excellency uh, Gautus Apabio, he wants to engage with every stakeholder. It doesn't matter how little uh, you may be artisans as stakeholders in the, in the Nigerian project. Lawyers Association, Medical uh, Association, nurses and engineers, they are all stakeholders. So it is my duty, if you will, uh, to engage uh, these uh, different stakeholders with a view to finding out how legislation can be of benefit uh -huh. uh, for to them right and what uh, the Senate President can actually do mm -hmm. to actually enhance mm -hmm. their own uh, and group uh, interests as well. And mobilize yeah. them. And mobilize them, them exactly, as to, to go along. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's what the stakeholders think. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much for sort of uh, explaining that. Now, back to the point that you are an Undo man, and we'll talk about uh, Undo politics this morning. It's one of your... Uh, many interests. Mm. Um, how is it, the, the two main parties in Ondo State, uh, PDP and APC, if you want to put it the other way around, APC and PDP, it doesn't really matter. Mm. Talking about the two main parties, the incumbent governor is uh, APC, yes. and um, he is serving, off, serving out the term of his principal, mm. uh, now of blessed memory, mm. Harakunwe Rotimi uh, Akere Dolu. Um, as to who he has, I have heard it said before that there's no uh, vacancy in government house. That has been said by his people. But he is from the, um, if I get the politics right, um, uh, the South. Yeah. Is he not? The South Senatorial District. The South Senatorial District. And it's particularly an Elijah man. There, 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 are three main, that, there are three basic tribes in the South Senatorial District. You have the Lages, where he's from, um, and you have the Kales, uh, and you also you have the Jaws, mm -hmm. who are those people, and the Jarobos, and the Jarboi, yes. and I think that's you the, know, that's four distinct uh, sub-ethnic sub groups. You know, it's that's, that's towards the north, right? Or is who, it central? Which one? That is where the, when we talk about the three distinct mm -hmm. groupings. Yeah, they are all in the South Senatorial District. All of those. Uh, are yeah, in the all South. of those people are in the South Senatorial District, and about sixteen. You know, I think so far uh, now, I think there are about probably sixteen aspirants uh, that are jostling for this uh, uh, for this ticket, and about fifteen of them are all from the South Senatorial District, except uh, Mr. Engineer Tunji Ariyomo, mm -hmm. who's from actually from Akure, mm. from my from my hometown. Mm. Um, who's from uh, Akure Central. So, but I think there's, uh, there's, uh, the, the convention is, uh, is there. The zoning, without actually calling it zoning, that uh, this time around is going to go to the South Senatorial District because uh, Akiti, late Akiti, was from the uh, North uh, Senatorial District. So it's going to go to the South while uh, hopefully... Uh, the running mate of whoever picks the ticket yeah, from yeah. the South Senatorial yeah. District is supposed to come from the Central Senatorial District. That's the kind of a zoning arrangement. And um, whether by accident or design, it seems to be the same, same in the um, PDP as well. Yeah. That's the way they are also looking at it. Yeah, they're looking at it that way. That the governor, the governor should come mm. from, the, um, from the South, from the south yeah. uh, this time around. Yeah. Um, now, the incumbent governor is also interested. Sure. And so if he were to uh, vie, um, there are those who are thinking that uh, it, it might look good to him, but it will be shortchanging the South mm -hmm. in the sense that they would then be limited to m no more than one more term. Mm -hmm. And since Mimiko broke the jinx about a governor mm -hmm. uh, serving two terms in uh, mm -hmm. Ondo State, mm -hmm. uh, it's like everybody naturally would be looking towards uh, and doing precisely that. Down. So who do you look at as the favorites? Um, oh, it, it doesn't come down to favorites. I guess it comes down to people who are vying. For instance, let me just uh, set the ball rolling. There are those who say that uh, uh for instance, uh, he's contested for the office well, up to three times, I think. And um, so there are those who are looking at it, if not from a it is my turn point of view, not that he has said that, mm -hmm. uh, but perhaps uh, the, the water might just ebb towards his side. Not everybody is in agreement with that. So let me ask what your perspective is as to um, who you would not be surprised if they were the front runners, or perhaps much more directly, 
Who are you supporting for the office? Well, uh, Yori, let me approach this conversation from two basic angles. Okay. Uh, one angle is from the point of view of the party, the APC. Yes. And uh, the other one is uh, from the point of view of the, of the potential aspirant that I think is going to be good for the ticket. Okay. And, uh, and, uh, let's, let's go with the party and, first. Uh, the, the, the party, you see, um, I'm of the view that the party has to be very, very careful uh, going into this election. Why do I say that? The party must look at this whole on those state election holistically. And what do I mean by that? What I mean by that, Rory, is that there are so many things that goes into electing an aspirant uh, for uh, a particular governorship election. And uh, I want to counsel that, you see, um, on do politics, and for the most part, equity politics are very peculiar. And uh, peculiar in the sense that we have electorates that can be brutally principled. Uh, we have electorate that can be, uh, you know, no pun intended, uh, cantacaros. So meaning that if care is not taken and the party doesn't handle uh, this process very well, uh, we might be trying to give uh, the, uh, the, um, the election to the opposition. And I don't want that to happen. That is one thing. Another reason is that we have to look at it from the angle of, um, of, the, of the base of the president. Uh, mm -hmm. The president, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, comes from the southwest. You see, we have already lost two states in the southwest. And that is not good for us. And that is why we need to be very careful not to lose on those states because this region is the, is the president's base okay. going into 2027. You know, so uh, from that standpoint, I would say that that's why I said the party needs to be very, very careful. So in other words, the party should actually look at all the different scenarios, mm -hmm. all the different permutations, and uh, by making sure that they don't give the ticket to somebody who has what can be described as a clay feet, because yeah, wants a clay feet. Okay. 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 Clay feet. Uh, yeah. Okay. Somebody okay. who doesn't have yeah. baggage. Uh, you, yes. You know. Yes, I understand and, and you. all of that. So now, was so the question now after after accessing all these aspirants as to their weaknesses, their strengths, they're doing a sort of a SWOT analysis, mm. if you will. Mm. The, the party should now say, okay, who should we send? This, goes to, this takes us to the antecedents mm -hmm. of the people uh, that are presenting themselves. The aspirants. And, uh, the aspirants. Yeah. And um, how the people of Ondo see it. Um, they want to look at things like uh, their integrity, mm -hmm. you know, their, their competence, uh, their experience. No doubt all of these things are going to be, um, you know, uh, factored into... Uh, how acceptable yeah. that candidate will be. Now, I asked you, um, who are you favoring? Who do you think uh, would be a candidate that would tick all the boxes uh, okay. for the people of Ondo? You see, uh, Yori, um, I've basically analyzed most of the aspirants. And uh, let me start from the current governor. And I've said this before, and I'm going to repeat it here. If I were the one to have advised him, mm -hmm. I would have advised him not to run. Why? Because um, he's running, and even before he decided to run, has actually factionalized the party. It has actually split the party down, down the middle. Why? Why? Because um, I'm not sure if you are aware of the, of, the, uh, of the thief, let's just call it that way, between him and late Akere Dolu, and the thief was very strong, although one may not be privy to what actually went down. But the fact remains that some very bad things went down, uh, to the extent that uh, when he was warning as the acting governor, the next thing the governor said was Akuriri. And, uh, and uh, you see, um, Akechi has his own supporters. And we cannot discount that. 
as much as Aye Datiwa also having uh, his own supporters. So in other words, might that the, 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 the speak that might be unforgivable, unfortunately, politicians and politi uh, political environment mm -hmm. will, 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 will latch on to anything. Mm -hmm. Might that not have been a mis misspeak mm -hmm. uh, that often can happen uh, mm -hmm. in the excitement of the times? And I say this because I saw a video, I'm sure you might be aware of it, uh, if not the video, the relations between the two of them, mm -hmm. uh, going back to when he was being chosen. Mm -hmm. And the nice things that Atiri Dulu said about him. I saw the video. You saw the video. Yeah, I saw the video. And you could, you, you, it showed you that there was no problem uh, between these two gentlemen. In fact, Akiri Dulu was promoting him. Mm -hmm. that of was, course. That was then. That, uh, now you say yeah. that was, was then. then. Yeah. And when uh, there's when no the water started. under the bridge exactly. since then. Exactly. Now, I just wanted to say that, yeah, that unfortunate, because Yoruba is a delicate, which language is not even delicate, it has its layers. Yes. Uh, and then when, the when Aku Oriri mm -hmm. was uttered as a statement, when it should be mourning, everybody would have known that, oh my God, mm -hmm. oh my God, that what was a misspeak. This is not the time for Aku Oriri. But mm -hmm. you, 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 you mentioned that in passing. Mm -hmm. uh, that begins to suggest to me is that some of the things that might be considered in the, you, you, where you were just speaking about why you wouldn't identify because you said you would advise uh, the gentleman the governor not to run not, not to run right. it. and then you were enumerating and I just had to interject at that point what you've just explained that well that was then and it appears things went as good after that well uh, not necessarily Yuri uh, because uh, uh, the governor has not come out in any way shape or form to actually uh, discount that statement or to reverse or to backpedal on or that, to explain it or to apologize or, to apologize or do anything. all of that you know so uh that it, it it actually puts a whole lot of a monkey wrench you know in mm. this in this yeah. whole thing yeah. and uh, i would think that the party actually needs cohesion and unity at this point and the only person uh, just about the, one of the key people that can bring cohesion to the party and the support that is the governor. Okay. You know, and that's why I said he shouldn't have run. He should he should have found a way, although he has the right, mm -hmm. don't let us take that away from him. But when you look at the general interest sure. of the and the one must first of all look at the general interest of the party rather than the individual interest. Unfortunately, nowadays politicians look at their own individual interests at the expense okay. of, uh, of the party's interest. So now, going, going to who do I... Because we spent a lot of time mm. and as of, often happens in political conversations, mm. you haven't told me who your preferred candidate well, is. Well, my preferred candidate is simply Senator Jimo Ibrahim. Senator Jimo Ibrahim? Yes, mm. yes. Hmm. And, uh, hmm. and uh, you know what we were, we, were, we, were, we were talking a bit earlier about boxes to be ticked, mm -hmm. and you think Senator uh, Jimmo Ibrahim is a business mogul, you know, is a lawyer. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how deeply involved he is in the politics of on those days, but mm -hmm. there will be the reasons why you think he's. There are many more experienced politicians in on those days. I would wager mm -hmm. than Senator Jimmo Ibrahim. So why why you why, why throwing in your camp. Well, apart from the fact, and tell me if this is relevant or not, uh, the Senate President and uh, Senator G. Brown Ibrahim would seem to be on the same page in, as far as his aspiration mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. Is it just because of that? No. Uh, well, let me, let, me just, let me just tell you why I prefer and why I believe people should prefer Senator G. Brown Ibrahim. When you talk about experience, mm -hmm. uh, he has that. Don't forget the fact Experience that... Experience in uh, what, sir? Yes. In business? No. Well, or in business, law? No, the business in law and all of that. Mm -hmm. That is that. But when it comes to even politics, remember, uh, Senator Jimmy Ibrahim ran as far back as in the early, in the early 2000. I think under, was it AMPP at that time? And so he has always been building his political base in Nondo State. So, and that is one thing. When, and uh, see... We are, we are living in, uh, in a modern world, yes. uh, Yori. Uh, anybody can sign files. You write approve or you don't approve and all of that. But governance is much more than that. This is an individual, I'm talking about Jimo Ibrahim now, who has about nine degrees 
A lot of us struggled to even have one degree before we get out of the university. But this is an individual who has nine degrees. So he knows his own. He, he is an ideas man. Is and, it, uh, is, do the people of Ondo State know him? Of course. If no, they no, don't I mean, know him, if they don't know him, yes. why, he wouldn't have been a senator at this point in time okay. from his that, own that's senatorial one, district. That's one way to so put it. So he's an household name, no doubt about that. But uh, he's now coming out to want to do for uh, the South Senatorial District, mm -hmm. where he hails from, mm -hmm. and also the, what he did in the business community mm -hmm. to the generality of the people of Ondo State. And let me also say this. Uh, Senator Juma Ibrahim is a first-timer. In the present 10th National Assembly, particularly we're talking about the Senate now, he's a rising star. Okay. Uh, and uh, he, has, he has brought so much value addition mm -hmm. to governance, particularly uh, from, his, from, his, uh, from Ondo State. Here is an individual who sponsored the bitumen bill. Ondo State is known to have perhaps the largest deposit of bitumen, that nothing ever has been done about it as, you know, as far as I can recollect. But he came into the National Assembly, he, he, uh, he sponsored this bill. This bill has gone through the second reading right now. It's going into the third reading. And he has already told us what bitumen itself can do in, in catapulting the developmental agenda of Ondo okay. State and leveraging that bitumen uh, to build building roads and other uh, infrastructural facilities. That's, that is one That thing. is just one. That and, is um, just one. It's, it's important. That, uh, he's, he's a man of many parts, no doubt, yeah. any way you look at it. Um, but you see, uh, and as you said, he must be known if he was elected a senator. Yeah. You couldn't pull that stunt if you if you are not known in your uh, environment. But in the political terrain, I don't know if to refer to it as the political family or the political orbit of Ondo State. That is where I was asking how well known he was and whether he could tick all the, uh, all the boxes because um, trust is very, very important. And um, uh, people will bring their judgment as to how, how well can we trust this person, not Senator Ibrahim himself, any person putting themselves forward for the, um, for the number one office in Ondo State. Do you think he has that relation with the generality of Ondo citizens? Let me, let me, Yuri, let me, let me make myself as an example. I used not to even like uh, Senator Juma Ibrahim. But uh, sorry, when... let me quickly take a caller. Sure. Maybe. Uh, good morning, uh, Mr. George. Uh, good morning, Uncle Yari. Yes, thank you for calling in. Very quickly, please. Yes, Uncle Yari, uh, what is uppermost in my mind this morning is about this uh, term that the Minister of Power is trying to bring to the electricity sector. Uh, Mr. But George, I beg your pardon. Oh, no. We have very little time uh, left on this particular subject. And so going off syllabus, so to speak, doesn't really work for us. I'm so sorry, Mr. Jordan. You don't usually do it. I must quickly return to here because we have just a few minutes left on this particular subject matter. Thank you, uh, Yuri. So, uh, as I was saying, I used to not like him, but when I, when I sat down with this man, Jim Ibrahim is very sound. He knows where the shoe pinches. And uh, he has actually advocated so many developmental programs, not even for the state, but for the federal government. Okay. He, has, uh, he has shown the federal government how to develop the economy. And uh, we're talking about a world now that is ruled by ideas. An idea rules the world. And uh, Senator Jimmy Ibrahim has that. I mean, it's not for nothing uh, to, have a, uh, to have an individual have a nine, uh, nine different degrees, including two PhDs. Mm -hmm. So I have no doubt in my mind that out of all the parks, the man actually stands out. Okay, no, I could, no doubt about he, that. He, he stands out, no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. I, and whereas you are speaking for him, I'm not speaking for anybody, but I do okay. look at uh, someone like uh, Olusha okay that I spoke about. Mm -hmm. he's, a leg, he's, a, he's a, you know, mm -hmm. uh, what do you call these, you know, lawyers? Uh, Sam. He's a senior advocate of yeah. Nigeria. Yeah. He's, uh, in fact, people have referred to him as a serial contestant. Mm -hmm. He knows the political terrain. Surely, he can't be much lower in your estimation mm -hmm. as uh, 
as a uh, appropriate candidates then then yeah you already see what i would say about uh, uh, what you Chief said Lai, okay yes is that uh, yes it's known to be a serial contestant no doubt about that but you see and an experienced person it, yeah not necessarily okay you know hey, but because if, if not necessarily jim o'brien doesn't have any experience in governance in politics <laughs> you see as I, i've said that before yori when you talk about the experience we've had governors who spent eight years just signing files yes. and approving yes. and not approving yes. without bringing any idea mm -hmm. into governance, okay. without articulating what developmental tragedy the state is going to go. But now we have a situation, we have somebody who has not only the idea, but who knows the business community, who knows the international community, who is also a big player at mm -hmm. the National Assembly. And don't let us forget that. You need different stakeholders as a governor yeah. to actually get what they call the baking I, I to your you. state. Uh, let me and bring in let not... me bring in Femi from Epaja. Good morning, Femi. Quickly, please. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm Felix from Epaja. Yes, go ahead, Femi. Yes, uh, good morning. I'm Felix from Epaja. Okay. Yes, uh, Mr. Yori, there's something I want to want you to understand. Go governor is not by it's not by degree. It's not by degree. Uh, no, I, know, I know that uh, your uh, your daughter has personal access with a different bank. That's why I'm talking about it. This government is not by degree at all. We know. It is state. Can, it is state can say this. What we, this person that is not for the can come and debate that. It's not like that. It is state. Okay, Femi, I, 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 what I heard you say is governor is not by degree. What I believe, yeah, yeah, that's the, what he said. The last bank, no, those things I said, that's what? Uh, okay, unfortunately, I don't know. Uh, let, let's let's uh, speak, let's pick it up from there. But, but okay, okay, Femi, yeah. Uh, yeah. because we don't have all the time we would like left, so we'll just leave it at that. That you take exception to my guest suggestion, and principle among those, uh, the reason why is that governor is not by degree, and that's in relation to uh, his preferred candidate, uh, Senator Ajimo Ibrahim, being quite widely academically decorated. Yes. See, uh, I beg to disagree with my namesake. Governance is about knowledge. And how do you acquire knowledge? You acquire knowledge by educational attainment. Okay. And how do you attain educationally? You attain education by reading. Okay. You know. By study. Uh, yeah, by, 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 by study and read. knowing the issues That's right. at, at hand. You know. So you cannot be so there's a somebody, scholarship component. You cannot be a school sat holder. So there's a scholarship component of course, to the high office very of governor. Big one at that, okay. you know, to good governance. Because if you study leaders around the world, you know that they are academically sound, uh, they, they are resolute in their conviction, and they have ideas. You know, you, know, you cannot have ideas if you are not academically sound. So okay. I, I disagree the, with him okay. very strongly that, yeah. okay. <laughs> yes, it yes. may not be the only education, I mean, degrees may not be the only right. thing yeah. mm. that, uh, that connotes good governance, but, but it is, the, it is, the it very, is one of the important. fundamental right uh, things for you to have. And then we have aspirants whose uh, certificate is still being questioned and all of that. Is that who you want okay. to put well, in government? You know what we've done here, government? Uh, within the limits of this program, what we've done here is that we've at least floated that particular boat and uh, it for, 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 to be examined. Hmm. Um, and no doubt we'll have to come back sure. uh, to sure. the subject sure. uh, again. So you need to give me one hour or more. <laughs> <laughs> really, because, uh, one hour more. I well, the, stakes, the stakes are very high, quite well, frankly. Yes, but, you know. but on those states, arguably, uh, has what it takes yeah. in terms of manpower and men of yeah. substance. Yes. Uh, uh, but you happen to be behind one of those men, not the only one. And, um, so, uh, and, and, and when, when you talk about manpower, it, it, uh, like, well, like what I said, I will always say, it only takes the deep to call into the deep. The deep. You, you cannot right. be uh, a, 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 a pedestrian kind of leader and acquire brilliant minds around you. You only surround yourself with pedestrian mindset, too. I hear you. you know, so it is, it is only when you are deep in your thinking process, it is only when you are deep in your ideas that you can attract others who are as deep as you to actually move whatever you are governing you know, and, forward. And, and this is why... And this benefits is the, the good people exactly. on, on those and states. This That's is the most the, important exactly. thing. Since and these people are not looking for the office for themselves, no, but no, for the benefit no. of the good people. Of, know, and, and, and let me quickly add, add to this too, uh, Yori. On those states, 
has not been lucky when it comes to good leadership or along the line. And uh, this is the time now that we need to start changing the direction. And this is the time now we need to okay. change, start changing the narrative. And when you look at all of them, the, the man, Jimmo Ibrahim, simply stands out. And that's no, that's no, a, no question about that's that. That's a fine place And there are facts. It. That's a fine uh, it, it's place. just that you that's cannot allow me to mm. present all the facts to you because of love the, to, of our, you of our limited time. I would love to, you can't seconds. You need much more than sure. that. Um, and that's a fine place to leave it. Thank you very much, Femi Odere. The statement that Jimo Ibrahim is, uh, what did you say you, you, you were promoting him, that he's, you know, in a way, uh, maybe he's right up there. I'm not even sure we want to use that uh, word promoting him. It simply stands out. Uh, that's, and, that's, and, that's, that's, and, that's what I was looking for. Yeah. Leave it at where you said yeah. Jimo Ibrahim simply stands, stands out. out. Yes. Let's leave it at that okay. till we meet again yeah. and continue this conversation. Sure, Thank you very much, Femi. Um, you know, senior legislative aid, stakeholders, uh, engagement and mobilization to the Senate president and um, public analyst. Appreciate your coming on.